So I'm gonna go ahead and make the Maria Emmerich hard boiled egg pudding. The only thing is I am out of canned coconut milk. I thought I had some, I don't feel like going to the store and if I don't make it tonight, we won't be able to eat it tomorrow because it really needs to sit for a few hours in the fridge to get the best taste and texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this organic almond milk that I picked up from BJ's in place of the canned coconut milk. And then to up the fat and bring a little bit of creaminess, I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of this canned coconut cream. So there's a difference between the cream and the milk. So I figure if I put a couple tablespoons of this into the almond milk, that'll up the creaminess and it'll add a little bit of fat to make the pudding really good. I have never done this before, so I don't even know if it's gonna work. If it doesn't work, it has nothing to do with Maria's recipe because I'm not following it exactly. I think it's gonna work though. So I'm gonna use my Vitamix. You do need a high speed blender to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and add 10 whole hard boiled eggs, obviously without the shell. We're gonna add 14 ounces of almond milk, two tablespoons of coconut cream, a half a cup of swerve. Actually, this is allulose, not swerve. I'm using a half a cup of allulose. Because allulose doesn't have uh, as much sweetness as swerve or regular sugar, we're gonna add just like five drops of liquid sucralose, quarter a cup of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and two teaspoons of vanilla. Put it on low, go ahead and start it up. to put it into a bowl. Oh, the farty smell. It is nice and farty smelling, but I promise it won't smell like that tomorrow. The key to this is make sure you're running it in the blender for a while to really get a good texture. So we got this covered up. Now we're gonna stick it in the refrigerator. This is a crucial part. You have to stick this in the refrigerator and let it sit for a few hours to really get a good texture and a good taste. Again, I'm not positive this is gonna work, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Not my recipe, I just enhanced it or modified it a little bit. But full credit goes to Maria Emmerich because she's a genius in the kitchen. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we enjoy breakfast and I am still enjoying breakfast, you'll be alerted to it. So it is day eight of the road back, which is us reincorporating foods back into our lives. Uh, we are going to start off the morning with a simple breakfast. Sometimes we eat breakfast and sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. And people have asked us, what are your plans moving forward? It's, as we've been talking about, eating to our body rather than eating to our watch. Yeah. So sometimes we wake up in the morning and we want breakfast, like today. Other times we're like, yesterday, we have a cup of coffee with a tablespoon of butter and then we don't eat again until 5 o'clock at night. It's whatever our time is dictating and what our body is dictating. I just feel so excited. <laughs> I feel so excited that I'm not afraid of breakfast. I'm not afraid of, you know, when I'm genuinely hungry. And I also like the fact that I know I'm going to be putting good foods into my body. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're going to have to cook it. We're shopping the outer aisles. You know, we're enjoying beautiful food and that makes me feel good about me. Yep. Last night we were actually putting together a list of some of the other things that we want to feature on us adding back in, like yeah. seafood, like shrimp, because we love shrimp and shrimp actually yes. can be inflammatory for some people. So I'm interested in doing that. We want to do a whole chicken, not just chicken wings, uh, where we're going to reincorporate, basically do a rotisserie chicken, but 
I, for me, I think it's the chicken breast, especially when we were eating so much that I need to shave my mustache or trim it because the hair bothers my nose. Me too. Um, let us know down in the comment section, what other foods would you like us to feature in reintroducing? Obviously, we can't do a video on every single food and every mm -hmm. single ingredient. Like, we're not going to do one where, today I'm only adding garlic. You know, right. now if we add, if we eat something that has a tremendous amount of garlic and we get some inflammation. We'll note it. Then we'll note it and say, well, let's try another day where we kind of break that apart. But you can, you can only do so much. One of the ones that I was thinking about, I'm editing. I know we're way behind on these, but we got involved with beef, butter, bacon, and egg. But the footage on some of these are really good. I'm editing... The, the rest of our trip to Keto Palooza. Yeah. And the one I'm working on right now is kind of funny. It, it's you might, definitely going to want to be subscribed and hit the bell notification because there's some interesting slap fights in there between you me and Steve from and uh, Steve. Keto Chow. But um, is lit, I would like to do Lynette's broccoli salad, which mm -hmm. I feel like would incorporate a bunch of things because there is some cheese in there and there's broccoli. She's got onion in there. I, I probably would cut back on the onion, but she did give us the recipe. So we're going to do a video on that and then also test. That's a good way to test because I know for a fact that cooked broccoli, and we talked about this the other day, cooked cabbage, that kind of stuff does cause a little bit of bloating in me. Mm -hmm. But my experience is that when I eat it raw, we don't have that issue. Which, that's the same for me, but it was interesting. So we were talking about that in the chat last night during yesterday's premiere, and people were saying, man, that's interesting. I have the opposite. I can do good if it's cooked, and I can't do well if it's raw. Right. So I love that we're discovering that everybody's body is different and what they have a reaction to and how they feel, and also what they'll give sanctuary to. Yeah. Right? Because, you know... um, I have, when I had the irritation around my eyes after I ate the cheese, for some people that would be like, that's it. If right. I have any irritation, I don't, I don't want any cheese at all. For me, I'm like, okay, I know this is going to be frustrating. There may be key days that I don't have cheese if we find out that that is a true reaction I have to it. But moving forward, I probably still will have cheese, yeah. even if it does cause some puffiness and bloating. I'll just know where it's coming life from. Life without cheese would not be a fun life. That would be me. hard. <laughs> so uh, on the schedule for today, you're going to church to set up kids ministry, mm -hmm. right? And I am continuing to do 100 things at one time. But this this is all my computer, so I'm editing. I have vlogs like to Doc edit. Ock. And then um, the biggest thing is is getting everything ready for Thursday, trying to put together a schedule. We've got a lot of stories that have come in from subscribers about their family and so their loved ones of just their experiences. They're short little things and, mm -hmm. and we want to feature those things throughout the day. So I'm super excited about that. At 1130, I actually have a scheduled call with Dave Feldman, the person, and uh he is going to just go over my labs with me and explain some things because he is such an expert when it comes to cholesterol. Right. And I want him to explain some of the numbers to me so that we can then share our labs with you guys. He's not giving me any medical advice or anything like that. It's just no. this, he, he just has a lot of expertise when it comes to understanding Especially the particle size and that kind of stuff. So it's nice that he's willing to have just a friend-to-friend -friend conversation about it. Yeah. And then after that, it's just going to continue to get my work done. I want to get on my rower for a little while today. Uh, at some point, we need to get back into the front room. I'm try I don't want to put it off till after the live stream, but it may get put off until after the live stream. But we did finally order our sound panels, which I'm really excited. I'm First of all, excited. they're pretty. I know. Can you right? imagine? Right? We're going to have these nice decorative we have panels. Pretty. And then in addition to that, like it will help with some of the echo in the room. He actually recommended we cover the entire window with a sound panel. And I'm like, I don't think my wife is going to go for the fact that I she convinced that me to put a bay window in there and then cover and it now up. cover it up so that you never see out of it. Well, especially since you're going to have that ledge there. I think that that will be pretty for pictures and yeah. all kinds of things. So yeah, I'd like to keep it if we can. So, but that's about it. Oh, last night during the premiere, yeah. some people were asking like, are we counting macros? Right. Now? And uh, we're, we are but we aren't. Now we are planning some type of 
a, another challenge for ourselves, not necessarily for the community, but if people want to join in, similar to beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, where we're maybe eating beef, butter, bacon, eggs, but also still having like, you know, my Redmond electrolytes and things like that, eating more of like a carnivore type approach for a month. Right. Where uh, we're going to actually follow our macros on a one-to-one -one basis. So right. for example, Rachel wants to be 145 pounds eating 145 grams of protein and up to 145 grams of fuel source, which is your carbs and your fat combined. It might be good to see what that looks like on the plate. Right. Whereas, you know, recently, lately, all we've been doing is eating whatever we want until we're full, but eat, keeping these basic foods. So for now, what we're kind of doing is just trying to make sure we're more on a one-to-one. -one. We're not putting anything in the chronometer, but I know a lot of the food we're eating. We've been doing this for a long time. So I know eggs are one-to-one. -one. Bacon is, once you cook it, pretty close to one-to-one. -one. So if we eat something very lean, like a slice of the Maria Emmerich bread, or if we were to have chicken breast, we're gonna bring the fat up a little bit somewhere else. But pretty much everything we're eating now is one-to-one -one as it is. It's just a matter of we're trying to make sure we stay there and not have a really high fat day or a really high protein day trying to keep those things equal. So that's what we're doing right now as we introduce new foods back in. So you're gonna head out after I you am. eat? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll check in with everybody later. So I'm here editing footage from Keto Palooza. And I know we are way behind on editing and getting these vlogs up, but we got involved with beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I put it on the back burner and now I'm paying for it because I am missing an entire day's worth of footage. And I know there were some good clips in there, but that's what happens. You know, you accidentally delete folders where you thought you used all the videos and you didn't need them anymore. And I was trying to create space on my hard drive and now I'm missing all those files. And that's why I'm doing an online backup service with iDrive now so that even after I'm done, there'll still be a copy up there until I know I'm done. My goal is actually to keep raw footage for a really long time. This way I can always refer back to it. Anyway, I was going through this footage and I'm seeing these huge differences between the way we look now and the way we looked back then. You know, when we were going through beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, Rachel kept saying, like, I don't feel any different. I don't look any different. I actually think I'm gaining weight. I think I'm getting bigger. And I kept telling her she wasn't. And now I'm looking at this footage. It's actually a clip of her in this sequence dress. And wow, what a difference I see in her body shape from just a couple months ago in September to now. I can't wait for her to get home. I'm going to have her put that dress on, and I want to show her how she looked in it then and how she looks in it now. So we just got done with our monthly coaching call with Coach Bronson over on Zoom. It was awesome, some good information. I wanna remind everybody, if you are one of our Patreon members or one of our YouTube channel members, that is completely free. It is the second Tuesday of every month. There is a link in the membership page on Patreon and on YouTube. And we will always send out a reminder and try to remind you guys in videos, but it's free every single month. So if you have questions about health, about nutrition, about getting some fitness, how you can get started moving, make sure you're joining. Again, it is completely free and it is the second Tuesday of every single month. So Rachel just called and said she's on her way home from work. It's kind of late. It's about seven o'clock, but she wanted to stay there today and get a bunch of stuff done so she can be ahead of the game. She had a lot of copying to do and cutouts, things to get ready for the next series as well as for our Christmas series. And I have been working on videos. I got a Kentucky blog edited. I got day five edited. And uh, then I started working on all the stuff for the live stream, putting together stories. Uh, they definitely bring tears to your eyes as you start reading family stories and seeing pictures of some of our veterans here in this country. So I'm excited for the live stream. So I'm gonna start cooking dinner uh, it's mostly cooked. What I did was I took the roast that we made the other day in the rotisserie. I've had it in a glass Pyrex dish waiting to be heated up. And the way I heated it up was I put it in a silicone bag and then I put it in the sous vide. Had it going since about 12 o'clock today at about 125 degrees. So just wanting to warm it up, but you don't want to overcook it. And that's what's nice about a sous vide is you're not going to overcook it. It's just cooking in humidity, so it, it got it definitely through temperature all the way through the middle at 125 degrees. Now I've got the Kamado Joe Jr. loaded up, 
and I've got a nice hot fire going. So as soon as she walks in the door, we're gonna take it out there and just put like 30 seconds on each side to crisp up the outside again and make it just like it was when it came off the rotisserie. Okay, Rachel is home. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the grill for a couple seconds. Oh, look at that fire going. Here we go, this is gonna be really quick. Let me get all the sides. Oh, that smells so good. What's nice about doing it this way is you don't have the drying out of the meat that you would normally have just trying to reheat this roast. Keeping it whole and then sous vide it and then putting it on here just to get that nice crisp again. It's gonna be just like when it came off the rotisserie. Okay, let's see how this came out. That looks good to me. Still nice and juicy and still pink in the middle. So good job, Joe. Why, thank you. I like beef and butter. Ooh, this paper towel is already dirty. It came pre-dirtied. Okay. I forgot about pudding. <laughs> wow, what a nice surprise. How was your day? You've been gone so long. It was so good. I did get a lot accomplished. Today was like me and the Xerox machine or copier machine were like besties. <laughs> I had to get so much stuff copied. I'm trying to get ahead and like toward Christmas. Right. Christmas. <sighs> it's a lot. <laughs> So here's what we got. We got the roast that I made the other day on the rotisserie. Looks wonderful. But what I did was when you left, I put it into the sous vide and it has been in the sous vide all day. So you can still see it is pink. It's pink. Even though it has been cooking in the sous vide for seven hours. Oh my gosh. Right? And then what I did was as soon as you walked in the door, I had the grill going uh -huh. on a really high, like 700 degree heat. Right. And I just... Put it 30 seconds on each side to kind of crisp it back up. Because, you know, when you put it in the sous vide, it kind of gets it soggy because it's, it's cooking in humidity. So I'm curious, like, how is it after two days? Because you normally don't like steak. Late. Like, the next day. Yeah. You're usually, leftovers. like, the only way you want is, like, cut it up and put steak and eggs and that yeah. kind of stuff. Is it still good? Still nice and, and medium rare in the middle? If you had not told me... That you didn't make, like, if you had told me, I made this today, I would totally believe you. Okay. Well, that's the advantage of sous vide. I mean, I know it's another gadget and stuff, but it, it's great at reheating steak. Why is it every time we film a video, a fly comes in from the patio? It's the charity fly. I, I Yeah, it is, right? So do you want to go ahead and try this? Yes, please. Okay. So I made this, Maria's recipe for the, all the egg, for the whole egg, calls for coconut milk, a whole can of coconut milk. But... I didn't have any more cans of coconut milk left. So you I used 14 ounces of almond milk, which is very different than coconut milk. Very Not nearly different. as fatty and that kind of stuff. And then I put two tablespoons of coconut cream in it. Okay. That will add a little bit of fattiness and hopefully texture. So here you go. I, I'll let you be the guinea pig. Wow. That was good. That is really good. That, that is, is really good. And I'm, I got to tell you, I taste coconut. Yeah. Well, I put two it. tablespoons in there. Wow. That's good. That is really good. That's good. We'll have some of this after we eat dinner. Okay. And then we'll see how we feel tomorrow and then Thursday. So I was going through like some of the stories and the pictures people sent in and I hope you're ready to cry. Is it beautiful? Yeah, there's some really nice pictures, like Mama Chris, like Autumn's mom Aww. sent in a bunch of pictures of her oh, family. I am so excited about that. So yeah, it, it, I'm really, really excited about 
everything with the 11 hour live stream. Me so too. I know by the time this video comes out, we probably will already have already ever. had the 11 hour live stream, but still, I got some bad news. What's bad news? So I was editing the Kentucky vlogs. Mm -hmm. And first of all, before I even get into the bad news, you kept telling me how, like, you all through beef and butter, bacon and eggs, you didn't feel like there was any change. You were like, I think I'm gaining weight. I think I'm going up in size. I need you to find the dress that you wore the first night, that sequins dress. Okay. And put it on. All right. Because you need to see what you look like that day, which you still looked great. You think there's difference? I think there's a huge difference, and that dress will show everything. Everything. Because it was a form-fitting dress. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be shocked when you see it. Now, for the bad news, so I was going through the footage, and this is why I spent the money to have a backup NAS system now, and then more money to back that up to online. <laughs> I deleted an entire day's worth of footage by accident. So... The last day, including the review of those Quest candies that we had, the clusters. Are you serious? Yeah, it's gone. Like, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, my god! But that's what happens is, is you put footage in a folder. Yeah. And then you there was a multiple footages in there. And I guess I must have deleted that folder after I made a different vlog. Because I've looked on every one of my things as backup. But that's why we're doing this online backup. So even after I do it, it'll be up there. And I want to start being able to save raw footage. I am so, so sorry. So we can go back to that. So there's going to be like, yeah, the last day of the Kentucky trip is kind of gone. Kind of bummed about that because I know there was some good stuff in there. But I did get the slap fight. That was still in there. The Priority. green slap fight was still in there. So before this gets too cold, we're going to go ahead and eat. I think this is your favorite part of the day. It is absolutely my favorite part of the day. I look forward to it every single day. I love it. You just love interacting with everybody during premieres. I do. It's just so much fun. Premiere is over. You want some pudding while we watch the <laughs> Keto Chow live stream? Yes, I do. Anyway, it was perfect. The premiere ends and their live stream the starts. Hey, sir. What? The only way that you can interrupt a Keto Chow live stream is if you were bringing chocolate pudding. That's, that's I thought you were going to say for keto chow. Let's try this. Well, we tried it already, but. Yep, still delicious. This is so good. Mm. So good. Delicious. I am really hoping that this does not affect us. Because I'm going to be very upset if this can't be a part of our life. I feel like I taste all the flavors. There's cinnamon in this, right? So there's a teaspoon of cinnamon. And like I said... Her recipe calls for a can of coconut milk, but I didn't have any. It is delicious with coconut milk. And the egg white version is also delicious, which just uses almond milk. But I really so wanted good. the fattier version of it. I feel like I'm tasting it for the first time and like my senses are super heightened. Mm -hmm. Is that how you feel? Yeah. I mean, and, and her recipe also calls for using swerve. I prefer allulose because I'm not a big fan of the cooling effect when you use Swerve. I mean, you can add some other stuff to kind of offset that, but I like allulose better. It's just not quite as sweet right. as Swerve is. So usually you'll have to put a couple drops of stevia in there if you want it really sweet, or you could put a couple of drops of liquid sucralose in there. It's, it's whatever you want. But the basis is oh. her recipe. Aww. Oh, I spilled chocolate pudding on my shirt. You need my bacon, bib. I do. Well, that is going to be the end of today's vlog. Yeah, because I want to get back to the And movie. I'm going to actually be caught up because I'm right in the middle right now of editing day six and seven. I'm almost done with it. Way to go. So you can premiere this tomorrow and then, or premiere that one tomorrow and then either this one tomorrow night or you can do it on Friday. We'll see how the schedule goes and everything else. But yeah. I'm really excited. Then we're going to do two days of beef, butter, bacon, egg. I don't even know what we're going to eat on Friday. On Thursday considering we're live streaming all day it may be a fasting day or it may be like how quickly can we shove things in our mouth I was gonna say it'll probably be how quickly can we shove things in our yeah. mouth well let us know how you guys are doing with whatever challenge you're working on now if you like seeing videos like this take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there also make sure you take a look at our most recent video which I'm gonna put right over here but whether you head this way or you head this way don't forget to head this way subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it till tomorrow bye, bye.